four ordinary guys with extraordinary ideas for Disney parks. This is Main Street Musings. The experimental podcast of tomorrow. That's right. Welcome back to Main Street Musings, the experimental podcast of tomorrow. My name is Jake. Joining me today, he sets the pace for the podcast. It's Eric. Hello. He knows all the shortcuts. Tanner. Yes, I do. And he's out there waving that checkered flag. We have Brock. Vroom, vroom. (laughs) So based on that little theme, if you haven't guessed today, we are going to be talking about a classic Disney ride from opening day. Autopia. Yes. This was an opening Disneyland attraction, and I believe it's in all of the Magic Kingdoms. I know it's in Walt Disney World, but it is not called Autopia there. It is called the Tomorrowland Speedway, right? Yes, yes, that is correct. Something like that. Eric, uh, how was it opening day at Autopia? <laughs> in 1957? 1955. Yeah, how did you enjoy your time? Oh, it was great. <laughs> he was a little too old for Autopia when it, when it opened. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you what, there like legitimately, there is nothing better than going and doing Autopia. Like once you already have a driver's license, most of the magic is stripped out of the experience because you realize you don't actually have any real control over this vehicle. But it's I don't know, just trying to floor it constantly and never hitting the brakes and swerving like in and around the the middle divider is a good yeah. thing. the fumes. <laughs> Trying to pick up Disney princesses like Eric always did. (laughs) Oh, for 10, baby. Now, I will say that I obviously a couple of us have never been to Disneyland, uh, but even its compatriot in the Magic Kingdom of the Tomorrowland Speedway, I never rode because, frankly, the line was long and it didn't look that fun. You and I rode it together. No, we did? Yeah. Wow, well, you can see how much that <laughs> left an impact on me. <laughs> I also wrote it once. I have no memories other than that I wrote it. It was one of those things we did it once because the line happened to be short when we went by, and it was something that we never had to do again. So I think that kind of takes us to the crux of the uh, the episode here, which is there's a ride that doesn't really fulfill your expectations of what a Disney ride should be. Correct. It fucking sucks. So what are we going to do about it, gang? Burn it down. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. Okay. Before we like shit on too much on Autopia, it was one of my favorite things as a kid. I agree. A lot of kids would agree to that. Basically, before you get your driver's license, it's amazing. Exactly. It is an awesome experience. It's like a straight sports dude like oh i'm gonna go racing yeah. in this motor vehicle vroom vroom i love bob gurr i have an appreciation for his work you know it, it's, it's good it just it could be better sure. yeah, absolutely. well i just think that we've moved past the time where we need to pollute the earth driving around in <laughs> old cars <laughs> are those cars even gas i mean they smell like gas but like, yes, yes they, they are <laughs> pre-covid There was a plan to update the Tomorrowland Speedway by switching all of the cars to electric cars, which I believe they have already done in the Asia parks. And then taking that a step further, they're going to retheme the Tomorrowland Speedway once it's electric to look more like the aesthetic of the Tron ride. So very futuristic looking cars with the lights and everything. But now that COVID has hit, who knows if that's actually going to happen or not. But so to answer your question, yes, they are gas powered. That's why they smell so bad. But the plan is to convert them all to electric eventually. So this is a fix it episode. Yes, to be fair, my critique, having not ridden it in years, is more about the smell of <laughs> of the ride and less about the enjoyment of it. Right. <laughs> yeah, and in Disney World, it's just this smell of gasoline bouncing off of hot asphalt. There's almost no trees or anything around. It's like an empty yeah. lot. Yeah. It, it's really upsetting. In Disneyland, there seems to be trees. There are. But... I'm imagining it's a lot of the same issues there. There's like trees and like a couple billboards. Yeah. (laughs) Okay. So, so it could be better. All right. right, Like I think about it. Like, yeah. Okay. I liked it a lot as a wee little, little take. It could be better. So let's, let's make it better today. Yeah. So if I don't think we've specifically said it, the point of this episode is we're going to pitch our ideas to improve update or just straight up replace Autopia or Tomorrowland Speedway depending on what you want to go for. So that's what we will be pitching today. Boys, are you ready? Yes. I'm ready. Ready. All right. I've started my engines. 
It's the part where we make a pitch. When I think of the memorable things about the Autopia experience that are good, not the smell of <laughs> uh, gasoline <laughs> against asphalt in the hot summer sun, uh, I think of a pretty... <sighs> Uh, a well-themed, if a little boring, Q experience. Uh, and I think of uh, the joy of open-air riding, and I think of getting my Autopia driver's license. Nice. Those are like the things that sort of bring the, the experience together. How can these things be incorporated in like a in a cool, modern way? And I, was, I, I came back to one of my new favorite Disney movies, to, uh, to the Zootopia. Ooh! Uh, they even share a topia at the name of the. Uh, <laughs> they the, do, so it's easy to fix the sign. Nice, that would save Early so pitch. much money. You just have to <laughs> just get a zoo sticker and just stick it on all the existing signs. <laughs> just buy a shit ton of whiteout. <laughs> So my idea for the Zootopia overlay of uh, Autopia would be to, uh, you are joining the Zootopia Postal Service. This is your first day. The queue is very much like themed towards being inside like the containment facility as you're about to ship things out. Before you get on your cool car, you get like a little card that says, welcome to the Zootopia Postal Service. Here's your license for your vehicle. Nice. Um, you have, I'm imagining, an open-air vehicle. I know that the USPS trucks have, like, closed tops, but part of the Autopia experience, you have to have open tops. Right. Um, it's just, you, you just do. So, and they'd have, like, a little courier thing in the back. And so you would drive through Zootopia uh, with the potential even for, like, if we were getting fancy interactive postal delivery stuff hmm. you're given a couple letters and as you're driving past them like mailboxes will kind of shoot out of the scenery and you put in the mail there and stuff like that for the kids um that could be fun and really and so it gives us a chance to really fill in what is one of one of the most disappointing pointing parts of that attraction experience which is that it's just so sparse it's full of like in this giant area takes up a huge amount of space and like the in the California one has more stuff, but it's still just a couple trees and a couple billboards. Like they had, they do like a very rough like R Route sixty six theming mm -hmm. sort of, and it just doesn't work. It's just so empty. And so if you we can fill in that entire thing with the Zootopia City, give it visuals everywhere you go. You can drive through the different districts, have different uh, mail responsibilities here and there. And you even have like, you know, room for you know, a pop-up little guide as like a hologram like in the front of the vehicle too, mm -hmm. leading you, touring you through the city and stuff like that. Touring you on your new route. Nice. For your first step. Uh, so yeah, that's my pitch. Nice. Awesome. I have to say, as a child, that would be awesome. You've taken the magic of driving and then you've made it the magic of delivery like you know to yep. a kid that's amazing to an adult you have taken <laughs> a mundane experience of driving and turned it into more of a chore <laughs> <laughs> no that sounds fun i really like that idea <laughs> i want to do more stuff more boring stuff i think i think, I think. that's what i need when i go on vacation <laughs> tasks <laughs> all right up next we got brock well, hello there. I'm Brock. Let me pull out my notes real quick. No. Oh, then this is going to be <laughs> tough. All right. So uh, Eric was pitching uh, a sort of reskin and update to Zootopia. Mine is actually a lot more holistic. I'm going to rip that sucker out, baby. Sorry, Bob Gurr. <laughs> No, honestly, Bob Gurr, you're my hero. If you want to give me all the Autopia cars when they're done, I'll appreciate <laughs> them every day this, of my he life. Uh, but in the meantime, <laughs> in the meantime, uh, yeah, no, I want to rip that sucker out. What I'm also hoping to do is kind of incorporate some of the area around that ride into my idea as well. Now we've talked before about the issue of Tomorrowland that it's a future that's never going to come. Yada yada. Uh, a way that Disney Imagineers have tried to tackle that problem in the past is looking at an, a sort of retro aesthetic look at the future, like a steampunk look. 
a Jules Verne inspired look is part of the inspiration of Tomorrowland in France, and it's also part of the influ- inspiration of Disney Sea. Now, I really like that idea, taking a tomorrow that never was, always could be sort of thing. And I love Jules Verne as an example for that. So I was noticing, looking at a map of Disneyland, that it is Autopia is right next to the Finding Nemo submarine voyage, which was formerly the 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea submarines. I would like to take that area, uh, completely overhaul the landscape, make it a large lake type water feature and in the center is the mysterious island this would be the hub of three different rides we would update uh well not update we would kind of post date the submarine voyage back to 20,000 leagues under the sea with updated technology we would turn uh we would create a mysterious island themed hot air balloon dark ride and we would create a drop ride based around uh, journey to the center of the earth. These are all Jules Verne properties that I think would make a really interesting kinetic ride experience. Interesting. Cool. Hmm. Next up, we have the other Gabbert Jake. That's me. All right. So mine is going to be more along the lines of a retheme of the existing ride. So obviously, um, the first thing I would say to improve this is this would be electric vehicles, not gas powered. Um, as Disney is already planning to do. So here's my, I wrote it down again, so let's go for my pitch. Hop behind the wheel of a real-life Sugar Rush race car from the film Wreck-It Ralph and see if you have what it takes to race on the legendary Sugar Rush racetrack, just like Princess Vanellope Von Schweetz. That's right, I'm going for Wreck-It Ralph. Uh, This is the game that Vanellope is from. This is the candy-themed racetrack, and I think it would be really cool if we could re-theme all of the cars to make it look like they're made out of candy, just like in the movie. We could have all of the scenery from the movie with the candy hills and the giant gumball machines with the gumballs coming down i would love to see animatronics on the sidelines of all the little um sugar rush land candy people hopping up and down as they're watching there's that great visual gag where it says assorted fans and then next to it it says with nuts and the ones in the with nuts box are a lot crazier so that is my pitch retheme autopio to be the sugar rush racetrack thank you for that enthusiasm <laughs> Nice. That nice. Cool. Sorry, I was finishing no, it's my really notes. Cool. I just always like giving people a second. Uh, like, is there? I feel like there's not like any r- real Wreck It Ralph like no stuff. So I think that I think, I think it's sick, man. Tanner, take us home. Okay, so my idea is sort of a meet in the middle between these two things. We're not gonna completely destroy. So we're gonna we're gonna change the entire land, but we're not going to. Uh, get rid of the idea of piloting our own vehicle. So for my pitch, journey to the depths of Atlantis, where you will have the opportunity to ride with Milo and Kita on the stone Katak. Explore the lost city, but look out for the dangerous creatures like the Leviathan that lurk below. This, This attraction will give guests the opportunity to pilot their own Katak as they explore the city of Atlantis. So it's going to be more indoor, but you're still going to get the rush of wind as you're piloting, piloting your own open air vehicle. And we, I want to give some sort of like the Autopia where you have a little bit of control over where you're going, but not full control because there's still a story being told. Right. Yeah. Nice. Oh, where's all the happy cheering? That's my Jake impression. To be fair, you guys were just dead silent when I finished talking. (laughs) All right, boys. Nicely done, nicely done. Good pitches Uh, all around. Apologies to Jake and Tanner because we didn't clap loud enough for you guys. (laughs) Proud of you, too. I don't really need it. I I, I have enough (laughs) self-confidence. Question and answer period. Q&A. Let's ask some questions. It's the part where we do Q&A. I have a question for Brock. I thought this was the uh, replace or retheme Autopia episode, not the Seas with Nemo and Friends episode. So I don't know what the <laughs> fuck you think you're doing. Um, what I am doing is yeah. <laughs> moving us into the future. Well, I just, it was an idea I had, and I thought that it really 
could combine elements of that area of the park. That being said, I get it. I get your complaint. But also, suck it up. Suck it up. I have another question for Brock. Yes. Uh, what gives you the right to play God? Uh, I, I am going to defer you to what to what I just told Tanner, which is suck it up. Just, just right up in there. I don't know if you should insult the people who might vote for your pitch. Oh yeah, like you guys are going to vote for my pitch. <laughs> <laughs> you haven't sent per- since parades. <laughs> Parade was recently. <laughs> that was like two episodes. Yeah, yeah that wasn't that long ago, idiot. <laughs> I know. I thought it was longer ago. <laughs> and I was going to make like a big... Ask Eric when the last time his pitch got chosen, crybaby. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> fucking ten episodes ago. <laughs> and he had a split decision with Jake. I'm 0 for 10. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, okay, that's fair. <laughs> Question for Jake. Yeah. As currently constructed, the Autopia uh, cars have a very set, very low speed limit. Yeah. In yours, are you imagining multiple tracks going at the same time to simulate a race, or are we just in the sugarous racetrack? I think multiple tracks going at once so that it looks like a race. Now, it wouldn't actually be a race because the safety behind that would be a nightmare. And as much as I would love to speed the cars up, probably shouldn't again for the same reason. But I think having the theming and making it seem like a race, I think would be enough to boost the excitement and make it fun and enjoyable. Cool. Juice those fuckers up, Jake. <laughs> <laughs> I want to see people exceeding 60 miles an hour on those kids who are not old enough to have a driver's license. <laughs> welcome to driving. Bam. <laughs> <laughs> So, Eric, actually, then, uh, I have a similar question for you, kind of, to in response to that is, would you be envisioning multiple tracks? Like, how is it going to work with the stops? Because when you were describing it, I really liked the idea, but, so, like, say a kid stops to pick up the mail, are we going to have, like, ten kids waiting in line to drop off the mail at that one spot? Like, how will that work? Uh, obviously, the interactive part, no, uh, interactive part of it might not be quite as stop-heavy and more like a, like throwing the mail at something, or I don't fucking know. Oh, uh, that's okay. also like you went on a paper route, right? Another like, question. <laughs> so you're going to give the children <laughs> stuff to the, throw? Answering this fucking question? No. Or are you going to talk over it? No. So you're going <laughs> to give the kids stuff to throw onto the track? Uh, sh- sure. I don't know. Um, <laughs> there's, I, I mean, we can keep that more fluid than that. That's just one, okay. one way to do it. It's currently set up like the Autopia track itself has two of them so that you can go like side by side for a little bit. I would imagine at least keeping that, maybe even going to like a third or fourth lane. Or no, it'd have to be two. Two lanes so you could get the full like around you visual experience. And then, yeah, if if the, the mail thing slows things down, we can talk about that later. And okay. Out a more smooth way to do that. Gotcha. Cool. Yeah, I've got a question then for Jake. Um, I was wondering what, how do you want to um, work with this in order to make it kind of meld with the Tomorrowland aesthetic? Oh, yes, I forgot to say. So uh, that is a very good question I had already planned for. So Autopia in Disneyland, if you look at the map, is mainly in Fantasyland. It's basically just the entrance is in Tomorrowland, which is why it's a Tomorrowland attraction. Part of this would be moving the entrance or even just kind of rearranging the way it works, even if the entrance stays in the same spot, but this would now be a fantasy land ride, not a tomorrow land ride. Gotcha. Yeah. I, I gotcha. forgot to say that that was kind of important. So thank you for bringing it up. <laughs> I mean, yes, it exists in tomorrow land, but it doesn't necessarily like scream tomorrow. Land right. Right. When it you're did, on these like nineteen sixties gas vehicles <laughs> going yeah. through like, It was Tomorrowland Land when the park opened in the fifties before there was expressways sure. or anything, but now it's just like <laughs> super outdated. <laughs> yeah. Imagine in the future you'll be able to drive. Yeah. <laughs> you'll be able to drive cars that run less efficiently than the cars we have right now. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. But yeah, so I think uh, that the, the all the candy landscape that I talked about, you know, the trees made of candy and everything, I think that would fit really well in Fantasyland. So I think that would be yeah, pretty I think cool. Yeah, that would be cool. 
it fits both, right? Because the, the attraction sort of straddles both of them, at least in Anaheim. So, Wreck-It Ralph, it's a video game thing. There are Tomorrowland ties, Sugar S has Fantasyland ties. Yeah, I, I think it works. Yeah, yeah. All of that to say, yes, Jake. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. So I had a question for Tanner. Um, yes, Jake. I was a l- little unclear on the indoor part you mentioned. How does that I'm work? I'm picturing to make it work, we're going to create a building there uh, okay. because I want to have animatronic show scenes so it wouldn't be an outdoor track anymore. That's where the whole kind of changing the idea but trying to keep the spirit is what I was talking about. So it's not going to look okay. like what it looks like now, but I want to so keep the, the spirit th- of you're still controlling. Gotcha. So would the whole thing be indoor or would it be kind of like the cars um, racing one in cars land where the track is outdoor, but it has parts where it goes into tunnels and stuff for show scenes. Then it goes back outside. I wanted to play with getting outdoor sections. I'm just not sure how, how exactly we would work that into the story of Atlantis. And still make but it I look think like that's something Atlantis. we could talk about. Okay. Gotcha. Cool. Because I do think in the s- sequel, at least they ride things like that also above the water. Okay. So I think it might be cool to have a scene where you come out of a building and into sailing and ski on top of the water and theming it just that way. Almost okay. like neat. a ski do. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, that's neat. No no questions for me other than how dare you and <laughs> why. <laughs> all right. I mean I kinda got why. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, it all made sense. Um, so th- I, I do have a question for you then, Brock. Would be yes. Would this be an issue with having just that part of Tomorrowland be steampunk and the rest of Tomorrowland not being steampunk? Uh, I think we could simply rebrand that. It's still to be part of Tomorrowland, but but it's kind uh, of like a subsection. Original, yeah, a subsection of Tomorrowland. Like this is the way they talk about it in France. Is it's Discovery uh, Bay or Discovery Island or something like that? Mm-hmm. So find a way to incorporate it into the idea of Tomorrowland, but just give it its own subheading, essentially. Okay. Neat. And that would be something I'd like to discuss if we chose my pitch. Yeah. Jules Verne straddles that line nicely between Fantasyland and Tomorrowland as well, locale-wise, so I think that makes sense as well. What are we, are we thinking? Are we good to go to votes? I think so. Yeah. Yeah. It's the part where we vote. This is actually a really, really tricky vote because everything's so different. I Mm -hmm. think the one that intrigues me the most uh, that I want to put more work into is going to be Atlantis. Tanner's pitch. Cool. All right. Team Money. I like them all so much. This is hard. It's really (laughs) just like what works there the best. And I know I gave Brock a lot of shit, but that I... The land seems really fun. I'm going to be honest. It seems fun. I'm going to vote for that one. Cool. Jake? I like Brock and uh, Tanner's pitches a lot, and I want to come back to them. Um, But I, in the more spirit of Autopia, I actually want to vote for Eric because I really like the idea of making it um, more modern and making Zootopia in the park is nice. And I'm fascinated by the whole male thing, and I kind of want to talk about ways we could gamify drink um autopia in that sense so <laughs> hey, that's so I'm, my word. I'm voting for zootopia uh, okay um eric and who do you love <laughs> i am uh, a torn between conscience and not forcing us to do a tiebreaker um because i was going to vote for jake's um, I thought still will. I'm going to vote for Jake's. It's right, the cool. one that I was looking <laughs> into the most for similar reasons, right? Like yeah. I, you know, you come in, obviously we both had a similar take on what we were attempting to accomplish. And right. I think, I think it's interesting. I really do. I think record Ralph is underrepresented. I think it's a really clean way of taking what's already there and making it interesting. So, yeah, cool. So in the past, when we've had four-way ties, what we did is we combined (laughs) the two most similar. In this case, (laughs) that can't happen. (laughs) 
we always said we would cross this bridge when we came to it and then always hoped we just wouldn't come to it. <laughs> yep. <laughs> we are going to go to an extra round of Q&A, even more Qs and even more As. And I'm going to say it right now. If we have another fucking four-way tie, we're not doing the pitch. We're just going straight to lightning round. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not kidding. It's the part where we do Q&A. To start, I do have a question about Eric's uh, pitch. Yes. I love the idea of Zootopia. I'm wondering aesthetically what we can do, drink, uh, (laughs) to that to (laughs) um, make it blend in with either Fantasyland or Tomorrowland. Exactly. I think it fits all right in Tomorrowland, but I'm, it's more modern still. So I just wanted to hear sure. your thoughts on that. Yeah. So the Q part would be in the downtown section of Zootopia. So the initial part of the experience would be amongst skyscrapers. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then you would move through the different boroughs of the city. And by the time you would hit around where the Nemo's, like the submarine area is at, you could be like at the water, like at a, a lake or the waterfalls or something like that. The uh, the the treetop section. Um, there's, I think, room in an experience like that even to take it out into like the countryside if we wanted to. I wanted to avoid the countryside a little bit because of I really wanted to keep things visually dense. Um, mm-hmm. <laughs> Which is something that, you know, the the current ride lacks. But, yeah, so it would be using the theming built into the boroughs of the city um, to create the aesthetics moving around. Okay, cool. Thank you. I had another question for Jake in terms of, yeah. so it's not necessarily going to be a full-on race. I just wanted to know, like, are we going to see and. Because it feels like it's going to be, since we're still going kind of slow, there'd be opportunities to look around at things. Are we going to see any of like our characters, things like that on the ride? Oh, yeah. I, I thought I had kind of mentioned, yeah, I wanted to see like some of the stuff from the track uh, and from the Sugar Rush world. So you'd see the giant gumball machines. In the movie, they are shooting the gumballs onto the track and you have to avoid them. <laughs> Obviously, not a good idea with Autopia, but I'm thinking it might be fun to see the giant. Um, gumballs maybe rolling next to the track and you're driving through the big uh gumball machines i'd also like to see maybe the diet cola mountain off in the distance maybe shooting you know soda out of it you see the fountain that shoots the pop you see the little animatronics cheering of the little people like i had mentioned um i also would like to see the big uh starting line maybe with the uh, king candy's throne not i don't know that he would be in it because he's like gone maybe vanellope would be in it since she's the princess now she would be in the throne waving her scepter I'd like to see a lot of stuff like that. And, of course, the big uh, leaderboard would be cool to be animated. And it might even be neat if on the leaderboard it showed actual live footage of people who were actually on the race. Um, And another thing I had thought of was in the race they have those power-ups, kind of like in Mario Kart. That's not supposed to be a ripoff of Mario Kart, but it totally is. (laughs) I thought it would be cool to incorporate not necessarily power-ups because you can't be like shooting people with cannons, but maybe if you go through a power-up space, your car lights up or makes noises like there's speakers in the car. So you could get, you know, like a fireball power up or something. And the whole car lights up red with flashing lights. And you can hear like a sound effect in the speakers just to give it that sort of like interactive element. Yeah, exactly. I think it might be neat to do stuff like that to it. Cool. Cool. I like that a lot. Yeah. And then I guess my other question for Brock is thinking about it more. Correct me if I'm wrong. Is there not like monorail track stuff going above that? Will we have room for all of these different attractions that you're talking about? There is some monorail track. Uh, yeah, but the monorail track, as far as I can tell, seems to go around the edges of that area. So replacing the ride itself, I don't think would get in the way. That being said, I think as long as the monorail is going around, that should be fine. Plus, the ride itself, which is, I think, takes up a little bit too much space, should provide plenty of space for the rides I'm looking at. Now, all I want to do is retheme the submarine voyage, so that's not going to need any more space than it has. 
I want to add a drop ride, which is a pretty small horizontal area. And I also want to add a dark ride, which would be bigger, but I think we have enough space to make all three of those work. I have a question for Tanner. Also, excellent answer, Brock, by the way. Thank you. Um, Good show. Good show. That section of the park at Disneyland uh, is also very close to the train uh, that takes you, like, sort of around the whole park, Mm -hmm. right? And it is uh, pretty close to the primeval world section of, like, where the train goes into some cool theming. This just, and this is just as a Disneyland junkie, in the. Disneyland version of the park, would you be open to, slash, do you have any ideas of how to incorporate the new Atlantis section into that particular part of the experience? Because I think that would be a cool 360, uh, you know, way to, a cool multi integration mm-hmm. um, yeah. segment there. I mean, I think going into exploring some of that cave neon blue glow in any part of it would just be a visually interesting thing to see whether you're on the train or on this dark ride thing that I'm talking about. So incorporating some of that and like the designs on the cave drawing type art on there, you could have some of the like a uh, statues of like mythical beasts and palace crumblings around. Cool. I love it. I think it's great. Tanner, is this more of a fantasy land ride then? I'm sure you've already said that, but it's mainly track. fantasy land, but what drew me to Atlantis was this idea of we've kind of talked about how Autopia is in this like amalgamation area. And I think that mm. Atlantis is a property that mixes really well a very steampunky future with all of this fantasy mystery, like mythical stuff. So I thought that would be better than like as a fit than cars there. Just because I was like, yeah. that's a cool way to blend it in. I thought the entrance way, keep it in Tomorrowland, that can be like a new discovery group. And you're going down and down and down as you enter before you then enter the mm-hmm. ride where you're in Atlantis. Gotcha. Yeah. It's the part where we vote. So we will start with Brock. Atlantis. Tanner. Zootopia. Jake. Yeah, I think I'm still going to go with Zootopia. Cool. We have a tiebreaker. Uh, My vote remains with Sugar Rush. Cool. So all that happened was I lost a vote. (laughs) Yep. (laughs) (laughs) Thanks, boys. Feels good to be back in the winner's column. From Zootopia to the next. (laughs) Zootopia. Replacing Autopia. I'm like the Uh, dystopia that is this podcast. (laughs) (laughs) Going over things again. We enter into this uh, very modern, futuristic looking facility. Uh, I think that, you know, we can use the Tomorrowland aesthetics around us to really modernize the uh, the post office there that we're entering into. The queue line exists within the uh, orientation uh, part of the new hire experience mm-hmm. uh, goes over like all the things that the car can do and stuff like that. Uh, how to deliver your mail uh, properly, things like that. And then we get out into the car where you start in downtown Zootopia. We move through the different boroughs of the city. Uh, I would love it if there was some interactive element. There uh, are some potential pitfalls with delivering mail with a stop start or throwing things. Both of them have uh, different issues. Mm -hmm. Um, So we can figure out uh, what the best way to do that is. Even if it's like simulated, maybe you're not holding physical mail, but like, you know, something like a slow moving thing will come up and you can like high five it. And like, that'll be like, you've dropped off the mail or something like that. But uh, a cool, fun interactive element for, for the kids is important to me. Uh, dense, dense visual uh, structures uh, is also important to me moving forward. And outside of that, I think we, uh, I think we can get talking. There's, there's a fair amount <laughs> that I would like to flesh out. Yeah, definitely. Well, for starters, I really am in love with the idea of seeing all the different boroughs, and I think it's really cool to be driving the cars through them 
And one Absolutely. quick little thing I thought of with uh, Autopia that's fun is all the cars are different colors and stuff. What if each of the cars was kind of looked like it was from a different borough? So, like, one of the cars you drive yeah. looks like it's from the rainforest. One looks like it's from the ice area, you know, the polar uh, borough, et cetera. I think that that's could be cool. neat. Absolutely. And I think that could be part of, like, the uh, – like, we talked about getting, like, driver's licenses or your uh, postal card or whatever. Yeah. Um, having something to even more strongly identify that with, we could even have like the, for each car that you're going to get, say you get one from like the polar district, your card will be like a polar bear or it'll have like little ice marks on it. They'll be like indicated differently visually on the card themselves that you're getting Yeah, really like full experience there mm-hmm. for Yeah, the, for the kids. Yeah. yeah. No, I love that. I think, uh, there, there is rooms for any number of vehicle types i think one for each borough is great maybe even two for each borough right like different color schemes yeah oh yeah i i I am all for every single car looking totally different like that would be awesome and autopia they have they each have special license plates because i know some people like Mm -hmm. are really excited when they get the bob gurr car because it has the bob gurr license plate but if we could really step it up so each car looked completely different and with, so that way you could have a favorite car like, oh, I really want to help. I hope get, get this car again. You know, I think mm-hmm. that just adds yeah. another level of excitement, especially for kids. Yeah, you Absolutely. could go from doing the uh, like start with the inspiration of splitting them up by the burrows and then go even further into different animals would have different looking cars in some way. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. And we see some of the motor vehicles in the movie. They kind of have animal patterns and animal inspirations, and they're all different odds, shapes, and sizes. So I think if we kind of take inspiration from the, the film, and that would be perfect, a perfect way to differentiate every single car. Mm-hmm. Yes. I actually do have a, a list of the Zootopia burrows in front of awesome. me. Awesome. I was just going to uh, ask for that. <laughs> if we would like to just go through them and talk about like the different cars that we could go through. Yeah. There is Savannah Central. I'm picturing an antelope-inspired car. Yeah. Maybe it has some sort of, like, horn element. Like, instead of fins off the back, it's some sort of, like, horn. Uh, I'd like to see it kind of looking... We would gear it more toward animal base, but I like the color schemes and the styling of, like, a safari vehicle. Kind of like the trucks mm-hmm. they use in the Safari and Animal Kingdom. It might be neat to have yeah, a vehicle kind of based on that. Yeah. It's very Mesopotamia, right, mm-hmm. uh, in that that area. the They describe it, like, I think in the movie, as, like, the Tigris and Euphrates coming together. Um, so those, like, soft browns and soft greens, like the... the, the uh, the more deserty style yeah like uh, a sage green tones yeah yeah i think those would be great there as like our color scheme to base off of those and then because i kind of like the idea of keeping like a unified color scheme from the burrows and then having different animals from there yeah. right mm-hmm. like, so you have one antelope you have like maybe a lion or something like that coming through there yeah um mm-hmm. and then maybe like a hippo would be kind of cool yeah mm-hmm. yeah uh, so next up we have Sahara Square. Isn't that what we just talked about? No, we talked about Savannah Central. Oh, okay. Yeah. Was, oh, yeah, uh, Sahara is the desert. Brock, you ignorant yeah. slut. <laughs> 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 so, yeah, again, that's, uh, that's very hot, deserty air. We could do camels. That would be kind of cool. Um, gazelles. Mm-hmm. I like that. A, a, a vehicle that's kind of inspired by both the camel's humps and, like, the sand dunes. So there's, like kind of rolling. Yeah, I think that's great, Brock. I think that's awesome. So next we got Tundra Town. So obviously, yeah, yeah blues and whites, polar bears, yep. things like Maybe that. Maybe make the cars look like they have, like, frost on them, you know? Yeah. The kid's got to get out Absolutely. and scrape the windshield before he can drive. <laughs> <laughs> More tasks. Yeah. <laughs> uh. <laughs> All right, then we got a little Rodentia. I'm not sure that we could really use little Rodentia cars. Yeah. <laughs> maybe, yeah. maybe we you drive through little Rodentia at one point and you see all the tiny buildings around you. That would be really yeah. cool to drive through. I think that'd be a really fun. But yeah, I don't think we and, could yeah. have them. And they like, could also have in. like citizens of Rodentia, just a small animatronic, and they don't have yeah. to themselves be all that articulated, <laughs> but just where you see citizens going about their lives. So it's a very busy, interesting model that. Yeah. Looks like you're inside of a city. Yeah, but I, I yeah. think we should skip the cars from that one. <laughs> yes, agreed. 
But there's a ton of, yeah, I think there's a ton of room to make that very visually interesting as you're driving through. Yeah. I think we can see some cars, but we're not riding them. <laughs> uh, then we have the Rainforest District, which is aesthetically drink my favorite. This week. Yes, Ooh, mine is um, mine too. All the cars are damp when you sit in the seat. <laughs> they're just wet. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I think like dark greens and browns. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then the blues and stuff. The vines coming out of Ooh, them. Oh yeah, I like the vines. Yeah. Yeah, I think that'd be really cool. I think that's a great idea. I think. Uh, and that's a, a pretty well flushed out of, of getting making sure each of them are represented, making sure they each other a Cali palette. Um, how how can we make it interactive without making it suck? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I mean, without, honestly, like, I, I without I will a ton say of this right now is I would be one hundred percent happy just driving through the different boroughs of Zootopia. I think that would be right. amazing. I'm also fine with that. That being said, if we do want to make it interactive, I would think all we could really do is put a button in the car that you can press when you get to around the right area, and then it's like, congratulations, you delivered it. Sure. And then you can have, like, an animatronic pop Yeah, as you say, with yeah, the it, buttons like if it trigger a something. special scene or something, yeah. Yeah, that would be neat. Oh, yeah, that'd be yeah. neat. So, like, citizens are waving and saying, thank you. Or, yeah, something, and it's like, oh, we received it, good job. Something like that. Yeah, yeah I think that's great. Oh, a letter from the IRS. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, too close to home, Tanner. Too close to home. <laughs> Still haven't gotten my stimulus check yet. <laughs> Says hippopotamus. Yeah, I love the idea. Uh, Brock, I think you, you hit the nail on the head of exactly how that should work with the button. And then yeah. it triggers stuff. And you can have it like, let's shoot some fireworks at the end, guys. Like, like, yeah. Let's hit some button, little, little sparklers. You did it. Great. Good job, kids. So when I was originally conceiving this idea, I liked the idea of a uh, holographic like, guide. But the more that I think about it and the more that we talk about it, I think part of what makes the Autopia experience cool, and specifically if we're, good, we're doing this one, which is more of a reskin, is that you it's just you and the road. Yeah. Right? This, you have some task, right? Maybe like a light radio playing, but I don't, you know, there's room on stuff like Star Tours to get like a guide, but I don't think so. I think you're just letting out and you're just driving through Yeah, the city, I don't think man. it needs it. The other thing is, I would like to say with the way we have the tasks set up now, just pushing the button, I like that it makes it optional. So you don't yeah. have to do it. You can just drive and enjoy if you really want to. Yeah, absolutely. And in, and making sure that we, we've put in the that Disney... That Disney budget. Oh yeah, into making sure the Zootopia city is as <laughs> robust as it can be. <laughs> I do think there should be two exits for the ride. One if you choose to do the button, and the one where if you don't click the button at all, you get fired from your job at the end. <laughs> and yeah. and they like rip up your driver's license. <laughs> yeah, there's just a Buffalo postmaster who's like, I'm really disappointed in you. <laughs> So we've got the cars, and we talked about the aesthetic of, like, Little Rodentia, but I think let's just go yep. through that list again and, yeah. and touch well, on each of so, those t- Eric, we start downtown, right? Yeah. So we'll start off with the city and, like, big, like, skyscraper-looking things around us, I think would be neat. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Cool. And what I like about the uh, the buildings in Zootopia is they're all kind of based around geography and agriculture. So they, they look like the real that, – that you have a building that looks like a palm tree or a building that looks like, uh, you know, a giant pine tree yeah. or a mountain. Yeah. I really think that design aesthetic was really cool that they put into the movie. So I think downtown itself would look amazing. Mm-hmm. I think so, too. And then you can move in there into a slight transition area because uh, my very rudimentary understanding of the geography of Zootopia is that the downtown area is in this Savannah Central. Uh, you got buildings popping up everywhere, and then you can kind of take that into a very small amount of, like, grassy area and then cross into the, like, the browns of, this, uh, of the Sahara. Mm-hmm. One thing I would like to say is... Toward the end of your Autopia ride experience, you pass by uh, the Finding Nemo submarine voyage. Now, the Finding Nemo ride area that it's housed inside of is a large, beige-looking, almost deserty type of rock. 
So I think that would be a, toward the end would be a good area to do the Sahara. Okay. Burrow. Yeah, I wasn't sure if that would work better or if the rainforest would work better to uh, to cover that to combine water with water. Yeah. Um, but if like if the Sahara is going to look more interesting with a rock, I'm all about that. So you could take the the greens into the greens of the rainforest. Then I think probably first. Yeah. And you, would, I, I imagine this on some kind of loop around the rainforest because that's a very vertically interesting area. It's kind of set on like different canopies mm-hmm. of the of the forest. So you can kind of circle through the different canopies down, um, and be able to look up and see vertically like these little the sections above you probably only go like 20 or 30 feet on a ride like that but there's enough that you could pack into one to two stories i think that would make that really interesting if you could get yeah, two like or that. three different layers for the cars to drive on where at some point you could actually yeah. be looking down and seeing other cars under you i think that would give it enough yeah. depth that it would be really appealing also for the that rainforest mean, yeah. section i would like to see like the very dense trees and some of the houses and stuff, but off of Mm -hmm. the tracks, if we could have rain machines running, so it's actually raining. I don't think it could rain on the tracks themselves. I think that could cause problems, but you could have it. So it's not raining on the tracks, but it's raining off of the tracks. Yeah. I think that would be neat. So when you're driving, even though it's like dry and sunny, you look to your left and it right there, it's actually like raining, you know, in the rainforest. Yeah. I think that's really cool. Yeah, and then the the lower you go, you can actually get that kind of weird uh, experience of the trees stopping the rain, right? So it's like right. weird. I'm going lower, but the canopy above me is keeping me dry. Right. Yeah. It would be a kind of interesting experience, I think. Mm-hmm. Is there any important movie scene or uh, visual that you guys think is important to include? I like the uh, ice the ice area. I know we really only see the impound lot, so I'm not necessarily saying we would have the impound lot in this instance, but I think it would be cool to drive through the snow and the and the ice. Um, and you could use, you know, the yeah. same kind of stuff they do at Blizzard Beach to make it look frozen. We could have snow machines going. I mean, they make it snow in Disneyland on a nightly basis, right, when they do the Frozen yeah. show. So we could easily have that going in that section, too. Yeah. Um, I think it would be really neat. And then the other one we talked about that would be really cool to see was the little town. I forget what it was called. Yes, Little Rodentia. Yeah. Little Rodentia, yeah. I think that would be really cool to drive through. Do you guys think that should be the end or uh, before we go into the desert? That can be the Not end. Not that big a deal, but I think it'd be kind of funny if that was yeah. the I end think too. that blends easily back into the city. So if we're <laughs> starting at the city yeah. and ending in the city, I think that's a good transition. So, yeah, I think that could be the last one before you come into the city and the buildings slowly get bigger. As you yeah. go, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. cool. Yeah, try and create like a trick of the eye as you're coming into it that you think you're coming into the back into the downtown. Yeah, section. And it's like, oh, the buildings are really far away, and then it's like, oh no, they're not; they're just tiny. But I think it'd be really cool to be driving through a downtown area and the buildings are at like eye level and you're like looking and seeing like little apartments and stuff and maybe seeing the little (laughs) rodents walking down the sidewalk and you're just driving like, oh, (laughs) I don't want to kill anybody. I think that's that's fun. Yeah, I think that would be a lot of fun. I really like this. This was I think this was a great idea, Eric. Yeah, this is awesome. Thank you. I appreciate it. I know we kind of nixed some of your interactivity a little bit, but I think it works. Is there anything else you want to discuss? I mean, how are you feeling about this? I actually feel great about it. Good. Awesome. Um, yeah, I, I think there is something like a reskin. There's not like a ton to talk about, but I think we found some really cool ways to, to discuss and really flesh out. I can see the experience, yeah. right? Like I, I can visualize it very acutely based on the way that we've talked about it. And I think it would be sweet. Yeah. Isn't like jaw droppingly awesome, but doesn't have to be a reskin of Autopia. doesn't have to be, it just has to be way better. <laughs> and I think it is way right. better. Yeah. Like <laughs> this is a way better experience. Walt used Walt Disney used to talk about, I had to specify cause I want to make sure we knew we weren't talking about Tanner's chest hair. Um, throwback to episode <laughs> one. Um, but Walt used to talk about plussing things, which is like, how can we take something that exists in the ordinary world and just make it better somehow? And I think taking yeah. Autopia, which is already, you know, decent, and just making it better, 
I think is awesome. I think we really yeah. plussed the ride. So yeah. yeah, kudos. I agree. And I think that's cool. And I think that's a worthwhile thought experiment too, considering, you know, we've, we've spent some time tearing some classics down. <laughs> yep. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Rebuilding a classic into something a little more interesting without losing the spirit of what makes it fun now. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, it was cool. It was cool. It was a lot of fun. So thank you guys for for voting for it and for for being so interactive. I love it. I think it's great. Yeah, that's cool. awesome. Great pitch. So are we ready for the infamous lightning round? Lightning round. It's the lightning round. All right, let's spin it. Oh, okay. You guys ready? Yeah. Yeah. We have a classic Disney ride. We're going with a dark ride, and we are theming it to one of my favorite movies and a movie we have not yet discussed on this podcast. We're doing a dark ride of The Love Bug. Okay. Sticking with an automobile theme. Tanner, Eric, do you know that movie? (laughs) No, but... They'll make it work. You guys haven't seen The Love Bug? No. I was born in the 90s. <laughs> <laughs> I love that movie. Is it Herbie? Fully loaded? Yeah, Herbie. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I got an idea. <laughs> Do I need to roll it again? No, I've got an idea. I mean, uh, no, we'll go with it. My pitch is going to be terrible, but we'll go with yeah, it. Yeah, it'll be okay. fun. Are any of the Herbie Herbie movies on the table? Yeah, you can do any of the Love Bug okay. movies. That's fine. Uh, you guys, that's your homework for this weekend. You have to watch the Love Bug. That's one of my favorite <laughs> movies. Come on, that hurt. That really hurt my heart, guys. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> okay, sorry. Did you say I was up first? I did. Yes. Okay. So we are going to be doing the first Love Bug movie. We are going to be in the final race at the end. I believe it was called the El Dorado when we're racing against Peter Thorndike. We will be seeing Peter Thorndike's yellow car racing against us as we are sitting inside of Herbie. And we will be taking all of the crazy shortcuts that Herbie takes, including the oil elevator going off road. And the big grand finale of the race will be when Kirby actually splits in half and the two separate halves of Herbie win the race. That is my pitch. Nice. All right. Seems legit. That's good. <laughs> Tanner. All right. So this isn't your mom and dad's Herbie the Love Bug ride. This is Herbie fully loaded. Yes, we're talking about the 2005 <laughs> film with Lindsay Lohan. So get into Herbie with Lindsay Lohan animatronics and all of the cars as you're going through. <laughs> and we're speeding around oh, with no. new Herbie. He doesn't follow your parents' rules. He's rad and cool. Oh, no. And some 2005 pop music from the movie is playing. Did you guys love that? Yeah. Yeah. No. That's good. I'd read it. (laughs) Brock. So my The Love Bug Dark Ride is going to be about uh, Jim, Tennessee, and Herbie getting into shenanigans uh, throughout the city. Uh, We'll include fun scenes from the movie, such as when Herbie gets drunk and stalls out at a race, um, when Herbie crashes an antique store, and also when Herbie contemplates suicide (laughs) and drives himself to the edge of a bridge, (laughs) threatening to jump off before Jim arrives to tell him that he needs him. That's my pitch. All right. Okay, so our dark ride is going to be themed very roughly off of Herbie Goes Bananas, where they go to apparently Puerto Vallarta, (laughs) Mexico. Except in this version, we will be foiling the plots of several Latin American drug lords as they (laughs) attempt to spread cocaine throughout the southern part of the U.S. Herbie, our USA car is there to thwart them at every turn. (laughs) That's my pitch. Nice. How is mine not the darkest one? (laughs) 
<laughs> See, what I was gonna suggest was the 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 Herbie dark ride, but underline the ride the word dark, and it was gonna be the part where Jim, <laughs> where uh, Herbie destroys Jim's Ferrari in a jealous rage. So then Jim beats Herbie with a shovel, and then Herbie gets upset and trashes Chinatown, and then tries to throw himself off the Golden Gate Bridge. <laughs> And that was going to be the whole ride. <laughs> the dark ride. <laughs> it's a great movie. You guys need to watch it. <laughs> I've never seen it. I just saw Herbie goes bananas and like, I'm taking something from this. <laughs> I just wanted the opportunity to use all of those Lindsay Lohan animatronics we know Disney's been keeping underground. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That they made after the parent trap. Can you do cocaine with the Lindsay Lohan animatronic? Yes. <laughs> Until okay. uh, Herbie Goes Bananas comes <laughs> to town. Yeah. Oh, right. <laughs> it's a say, combo, yeah, right? Herbie's against that, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> no, not mine. He's not your mom and dad's Herbie anymore. He loves coke. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so that wraps up another episode of Main Street Music. <laughs> Thanks for listening, everybody. Brock, you wanna Brock, you got anything to say? <laughs> All right. <laughs> Tanner, put the pedal to the metal and head toward that Instagram. I'm heading right toward main underscore street underscore musings. Jake, you better hit the brakes. You're about to hit our Facebook. Oh no. Facebook.com slash main street musings. And Wow, what kind of mileage do you get on this Twitter account, Eric? <laughs> 69 to the gallon, baby. <laughs> At MSM underscore podcast. And I'm Brock. Everyone, make sure to rate, review us, give us five stars, and tell your friends we love you very much, and goodbye! Be why, do we have to tell their, why do they have to tell their friends that we love them very much? Well, because, you know, there needs to be some love spread around. What the world needs now, Tanner, is love. Sweet love. Apparently, according to Jake, it needs the love bug. Nice. The love bug. Not a venereal disease. <laughs>